what is up youtube today we're going to be updating the top five jungle list with the new patch taking golden bow away adding some new items changing relics new god there's obviously going to be some changes since the last top five jungle list was a, even longer ago since it was one of the first ones i put out there have been a lot more changes uh it's going to change drastically pretty much completely so get prepared for this and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it first off we're going to actually not even first off we're going to work our way backwards um we're going to start at number five and for number five it's going to span across three maybe even four gods mainly because there isn't one that's necessarily going to be better in every situation than the other it's going to start off with al Kuang being at number five I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the mages real quick. So we got Alquan being at number five. Still really, really potent. He's just annoying as shit. He does a lot of damage. If he makes it to mid to late game without falling super far behind, he can control a game by himself. Everyone knows that. Everyone understands that. He's gotten nerfs. The nerfs aren't drastic enough to change the fact that he one shots. Soul Reaver got nerfed a while ago. That still doesn't change the fact that he can one shot people. He does a lot of damage. It's the way it works. So let's jump back to Assassin. So we got we got Al Kuang is one of our fifth place spots. Like I said, it's probably it's more like a top four plus three people tied for fifth. That's kind of what we're doing here. So for fifth, tied for fifth, we got Al Kuang coming in as another tie, in my opinion, is going to be Nija. The god is just fantastic. Great early game. Pretty good mid game. Actually, it's really good. For being honest and then late game can fall off if you don't get ahead but can still do the job of taking out one person which is all you need to do if you can trade your life for another and you've gotten your team ahead early in mid game which is what ninja does then you're good that's all you gotta look for plus the fact that they changed the passive the passive has been changed so the passive no longer gets consumed when you use your two when your heal when you use it to heal it doesn't eat all the stacks it heals based on the stacks but it does not take them away, so you remain having the critical strike chance per stack. So in a fight, you can sit there and beat someone's ass down, heal yourself, beat someone's ass down for a few more seconds, and it won't reset. It's got a, it takes like 10 seconds to fall off for all your stacks. Your stacks do fall off now, they aren't permanent. But you can heal yourself two or three times in a team fight while also maintaining the crit chance. Your boxing potential is a lot higher, especially early and mid. The fact that you've crit early, that stays. And then you're healing yourself at the same time. It's just really, really strong. I think at first I thought the passive was going to be worse, but I'm liking it. Um, the little bit I got to play on the Jai was awesome. I have no complaints. It's really easy to build the stacks up now because your ring bounce stacks it. So it's real quick to get five stacks. It, it's, it's no challenge at all. So we have Alquang, Nija, both sitting at five for me. The last one in this list. Everyone's either going to be like, yay, or what the fuck are you smoking? It's going to be ne or, <laughs> Nemesis. It's going to be Nemesis as the other top five. I think Nemesis is just potent as shit. A while ago, the alt got buffed, and it wasn't crazy. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, Nemesis is number one now. It didn't happen. But with the fact that Boots, Void Shield uh, have become a standard build, and then the fact that they added in the new item, the Ritual Dagger, it's 2,000 gold. It gives you uh, 200 health movement speed attack speed and cdr so right away you can finish an awesome item in void shield you can get some cdr online for cheap health to go along with the void shield so you're tanky you have pen you have attack speed you have your alt that's been buffed um i think those two items are going to synergize very well in nemesis and i think we're going to see a spike in nemesis play throughout the season Granted, I could be wrong. I still think with the right team comps, Nemesis was always good. And I think now it just gives them more room to not have to have the perfect team comp. So I think you're going to see more Nemesis. I think you're going to see a lot of success out of Nemesis. We'll see if the curse breaks in this split or not. So those are the number five. We have three gods sitting at number five. Now we will jump into the top four, basically. We're going to start at number four. It's a warrior. It's the new god. It's Erlang Shen. This god to me screams assassin aside from the alt. The alt is a taunt, and at the end of the taunt, um, two seconds after you taunt for two seconds, and two seconds after you heal for a shit ton. As you can see, the numbers right here, you heal for a lot, a lot, a lot. Aside from that, you have an auto attack with a fatalis and damage. You have a root that does damage, and you have a Sun Wukong type ability where you can either knock people up and get a shield for health, or you can do a ton of damage and get attack speed. 
So, you have a Fatalis and a attack speed buff, or you have a Root and a Fatalis, or you have a shield that knocks people up with a Fatalis, and you can auto people in the air and do extra damage. Like, your Fatalis plus bonus damage on your one is crazy. This god to me screams Assassin. It will probably get played in the solo lane, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was success in the solo lane. But this god can play the jungle amazingly. The fact that you build tanky into like an auto attack type build rather than an ability based build is a nice change of pace. And the fact that it works very well is awesome. The only part that I've had any trouble or seen trouble with is the syner synergizing with the alt. It can be really, really perfect or pretty much a big waste. It's not one of those assassin type alts, but it is very useful. You can make plays with it and it's you don't want to forget about it you, you need to remember like you have this awesome kit plus this crazy defensive type ability it's weird um but yeah erlang shen number four will do well in most matchups um you have early pressure with auto attack so if if you're in any game where you can auto attack more than three times your first ability is going to be adding a ton of extra damage to that you will do a lot. Uh, I said earlier, build damagey with attack speed or attack. So you're looking at like void shield, um, the new item, kins, uh, hide of the urchin, stuff like that. All really good items. Going to make him tanky and also make him do a lot of damage. I haven't really found too many super hard matchups for him. Anything that can lock you down is going to be hard in team fights. Similar to most assassins, obviously. But because his, he has this taunt, which actually takes a little bit to go off, it takes those four seconds, I believe is what it is. Let's check. It's something like four seconds to completely go off, or yeah, after four seconds you heal and you gain damage mitigation. But if you can get locked down, so if you're playing against um, like Thors or just another team has a bunch of lockdown, Kumba, Athena, stuff that can keep you from moving in team fights and they focus you, you can have a really hard time if you aren't tanky enough. So that's why I think building tanky is going to be key. And I think that's where most people struggle is if they try to go full assassin builds and the other team actually knows how to control and lock you down and kill you as five. <laughs> now we move on to number three, back into assassins. The rest will be all assassins. It shouldn't be a surprise. For me, number three is Thor. Never going to change. Thor has almost always been in the top five. Global alt, control, high early and mid damage. Uh, doesn't really fall off, just kind of, kind of changes the style you need to play. And you're you're fine like thor will always be good um i'm halfway through <laughs> through this list i haven't recommended i haven't said anything smite junkies is the website i always tell you to go to for builds for this sp or the, after this patch the smite junkies will be hopefully updated within the next two to three weeks so you're going to go there you're not going to see all updated builds um all the builds will be from last patch before the new items before golden bow is taken out um uh, just bear with me i will get it updated as soon as possible and hopefully it doesn't take too long. I don't think it will take too long. I'm going to get some help um, just to get it all up and done and right. So whenever you guys go to look at builds, use my junkies, but wait two to three weeks for everything to be updated before you freak out. <clears throat> all right, so we got Thor down as number three. You guys already know why I've said why in 80 videos. Number two, Suzano. Receive nerf. I think, what, nerf after nerf? Like two or three nerfs. Um, the god still does a buttload of damage. With CDR, you have two dashes on short ass cooldowns. You have a controlling knockup that can like does like a Hades alt that has damage and a knockup. It's kind of crazy. Um, you have a two which is a small pull. The kit is just awesome. It works really well. You have a lot of burst damage. It's unexpected. Once again, with this god, if you get controlled, like with most assassins, if you get locked down, you probably will get destroyed. Like you will die fast. This god is more of an ability based tanky type god to me once again instead of like erlang shen where you build attack damage you kind of build ability based yotans um freaking brawlers all all the ability based type things with tanky with void shield with hide of the urchin or cdr breastplate whatever you need uh, cdr does very well on him some defense some health does very well on him and raw power and pen obviously do well on him his damage is very freaking high it's insane. And his ult can do a lot more control than people expect. He's very good at killing one single person. If you can get alone with somebody, you can kill them. It, it, you do a lot. And if you can't kill them, if you start to lose the 1v1, you have 8 abilities to disengage yourself and live. Just make sure you remember that. Uh, for bad matchups, there aren't too many. Once again, the gods that can lock you down. You just have to play properly and deal with it. That, that's as simple as that. It's something you have to learn. Being tanky helps you learn 
how to position and do that stuff better. Now for number one on the list, it might be a surprise to some people. I just feel like we're going to see a ton of this god if it doesn't get banned every single game in ranked. It's banned all the time. Ratatasker received a complete overhaul on abilities pretty much. Um, the dash is different when you dash. If you use abilities after dashing, the cooldown goes down by two seconds or whatever it is. It's something crazy. The acorn replaces your boots. And you can start with rank 2 acorn, which gives you 10 power and 10 movement speed. So instead of going red pot, you get 10 movement speed at the start of the game, which is ridiculous. So Ratatasker is an awesome start. You have a slow, what has a massive cooldown on it. It can be, what, 5 seconds or something ridiculous. You have a protection shred with damage. So you have two damaging abilities. Slow protection shred. And then your third ability is also more damage with a stun. Which synergizes amazingly with the kit, and you have early pressure, early aggression, you do a lot of damage, the fact that you have three abilities hitting, and when you can do that kind of burst damage, the person's not going to want to fight you, and then you get to auto attack for free a lot more, and do insane amount of damage without taking very much at all. And then you're all, once again, another damaging ability with a knockup. So you've got damage slow, damage protection shred, damage stun, damage knockup. Four damaging abilities. Extremely ability based god. Once again, if you build like a pure assassin, might get handled a little bit because you have a dash, you don't really have like that leap or that blink or whatever. You can get controlled. So you might want to build a little tanky with pen CDR damage. You don't have to go crazy tanky because Ratatasker has the alt to get out. Um, the dash is on a short cooldown as long as you use your abilities properly. You can max the abilities however you want. A lot of people like maxing the one because it's on a short cooldown. So you can dash, use your other two abilities, dash again. Um, if the game isn't Going that way, you can always max your three and use your dash to escape whenever you need to. The god just has a lot of potential, a lot of control, a lot of damage, uh, a lot of support for your team with the fact that you can stun somebody so you can peel, you can slow, you can <laughs> kill the tanks with the protection shred. It just has a lot. You have the global alt basically. Um, with a, You can hang in the air for a really long time so you can bait people out. This god is the full package. They have nerfed damage on the three and the two, I believe, or maybe just the three. Might have been the three and the one. I don't know. I know they nerfed damage at some point, and it didn't affect Ratatasker much at all. Just know that Ratatasker is fucking beast mode. You'll see him in competitive. Whether it's all the time, whether he's banned, I'm not sure. But if I could pick Ratatasker and play him all day at a competitive setting, I would. Ratatasker is beast. Expect it. Expect to deal with playing against it, watching it in competitive. And that's just how it's going to be. So hopefully this top five video is is enlightening it, you guys you guys understand why i'm picking the top four plus the other three uh mercury got killed in this patch without golden bow they're gonna be buffing him apparently they're waiting to see what happens so we might see mercury come back later uh a Wheelix is still good but it, it's not one of those gods you're gonna pick every single game you have your guardians like Kabraken and stuff who do decently but if you're going to focus on four or five gods Six, seven, whatever I ended up actually listing. Listing, uh, those are the ones I would focus on. That doesn't mean you won't see any other gods. You might still see Kali. You might still see other gods played. But if I had to list the top five, these are top five. So focus on these. Learn how to play these. Learn how to build these. Like I said, Smite Junkies will be updated as soon as humanly possible. Um, hopefully you guys like the video. Leave a like, comment below if you have anything to say or any recommendations or anything you want to you want to argue with me or tell me what you think. Go ahead. Um, also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content. It really means a lot when you guys do that. So I will see you all in the video tomorrow and we will have another top five video coming out next week.